Welcome guys to Let's Build a Castle Part 3. As you can see here, we go through the gateway we built in Episode 1 and across the bridge we built in Episode 2. And now in Episode 3, we are going to build this grand mess hall you can see that is at the entrance to the main castle. So, as you can see, I've gone to incredible elaborate detail and this is definitely a good episode. So, as we open here, this is what we built so far and we were left with this template of, yeah, call it the mess hall or a great hall, just kind of the main communing room you would expect to find in a castle where a king can give out meetings, all that kind of stuff. It has a, a multi-purpose kind of room. So, as usual with my let's build, I get where, I get, I get Get rid of the simple things right at the start and which in this case is mainly the roof and the, f the walls because the way I'm going to build this instead of just building up the detail straight away I am um, to help me experiment I actually just built the whole wall itself and this allowed me then to actually build off the walls if you get what I mean like engrave into them and build away from them it just helped with my building process so as you can see I have coated both the two walls I'm going to use as examples to obviously build upon and to straight away start off I'm just creating an overhang of the ceiling uh, just to create that extra bit of detail that extra bit of just because as well I say detail and stuff in a work in a respect that um, that actually because of these shaders mods the lighting is incredibly efficient in making things look that extra bit more detailed so with overhanging ledges and stuff the shadows react differently and just add a different vibe so just adding this little small details like that are hugely essential and due to this room being so big and got such huge walls again due to the shaders mod this means the lighting in Minecraft is incredibly different and that means that to get a room to light up nicely you need either a lot of torches or a lot of windows and to, to me to make it look that a little bit more nice, a little bit more realistic, I, I opted for a lot of windows, which has meant here I've had to, as you can see, me varying up the same materials again to create a quite a grand wall, but at the same time, not have it as a big complete window or not have it as a big complete wall. I'm trying to go approximately like you know 50 50. I want a lot of windows and a lot of walls just to let that light shine in and make sure we can see inside the room. And I'm just playing around here as you can see just building up the details seeing what works what doesn't where little windows can be added just to add that extra bit of light that extra bit of detail to create an efficient design and as you see now on the inside we have quite an interesting scope and we need to um, we need to actually design this as well on the inside because obviously uh, we want it to look equally as good on the outside as it does on the inside and thankfully throughout this build uh, you'll see this even in the later bits the designs I use on the outside influence the designs on the inside and due to the way I build it, I don't know why, it's like fate, just the way it works, works so well and you'll see that later with the side windows. But for now, as you can see, using a little bit less detail on the inside because I want it just to be quite a smooth, nice dark wall and just using the same materials over and over again, you know, to keep that continuity through and just building something on the inside that looks a little bit more de de decorational and a lot more grand than just that plain wall we saw earlier with the windows. And as you can see, I feel that looks incredibly impressive for both the outside and the inside. And now we move on to these side walls. As you can see, I've just made these little portholes and directed, so just so for my building purposes now, just so I didn't have to show you guys that, all the measuring up and seeing how many windows I could fit along, I've put these little portholes in just for, just for my benefit, you know, just so, uh, just so I know how to build it. So, what we're actually going to work on here are these big, grand side windows. And as I'm just building this, I'll explain, we're not actually going to work on the inside of the, uh, the keep. Uh, in this episode, we'll actually do that in the next episode. So in this episode, we're working on the whole outside, and then the grand interior will be in the fourth episode. So as you can see, I'm just building up, varying up those materials, and here I feel I've neglected the stone slabs a little bit, and they use a much lighter grey. And throughout the castle, I've been using these as highlights, you could say, highlighting different areas and just creating that little bit of extra colour you might expect. So I felt this was an opportune moment to reintroduce them again here. And obviously we're using a lot of dark greys and then just using these lighter greys just to add that extra bit of detail, that extra bit of light, that extra 
extra bit of colour. So, building up these layers by layers, and this was actually semi-inspired by, um, a, in the city of York in England, there is a cathedral, a uh, minister you could say, it's called, actually called York Minister Cathedral, and that is where the idea really of these windows came from. The way that we have that long window at the bottom, and then at the top, it has another window, a second window, but a smaller window, and that idea, just so, cause, just as I walked past it one day, I thought that would be a brilliant design for my great hall, and that was for the previous castle that we have since moved away from, but I'm going to redevelop that idea again here. It isn't exactly the same, but that whole concept is where it in fact came from. So, as you can see, building up here and just creating that second window. The second window is going to be much, much smaller, but equally as pretty and grand, and just adds that extra bit of detail to the roof itself. And as you're building this design, you might think, oh, it does look good, but it's not good. it doesn't look great. It looks incredible when we actually have it repeated, which is the same with a lot of things. Like when we were building the bridge, as I was building it myself, I sat there like, maybe I could do this better. Is there a better way this could be done? But then it's just patience really, because as soon as I normally finish a little bit of a design and then repeat it along the bridge, I thought that looks incredible. And it's the same with this window. As you can see, I'm incredibly happy with this window. and think it looks incredibly good, although, when we duplicate it like that and have it all along the side, it, abs it looks absolutely spectacular, as you can see. And that brings us to the end of this episode. In the next episode, we're going to build this interior. And as you can see, as I was saying earlier, how the little windows create that roof design that will be incredibly good in the next episode. So, in the next episode, we're going to build this huge interior here. Have the king's throne sat right where we just went over and just create an, an absolute spectacular piece of interior design. So, as you see, we've done quite a lot in this episode, it's quite a big episode, and we've got plenty more to come. As I just pan through the template, we've got the King's Quarters to do, and we get to start working on the towers in later episodes, but until then, I will see you next time. Goodbye! Mwah.